everyone, so in this video I want to talk to you about some events that have been happening in the news lately and they have to do with how politicians and leaders of countries and provinces and whatnot have been talking about mental health in the news and how this rhetoric that's being used around how they're talking about mental health is really, really toxic in nature. So the two instances that I want to really dissect and talk about particularly today have to do with Doug Ford, who is the Premier of Ontario, which is a province here in Canada. He's the leader of that province. And how he was talking about an instance concerning um, a gentleman who was living with schizophrenia. And also I wanna talk about a video clip of Donald Trump talking about how mental health pertains to mass shootings in the States. So like I mentioned, the first video is going to be of Doug Ford talking about um, a man who was living with schizophrenia who committed a violent act a few years back and who has, um, I guess, fled CAMH, which is a mental health treatment facility in Toronto, Ontario. So with that, here is what he had to say about uh, the situation. You can't let guys like this lose you. Throw away the key. Unbelievable. I wouldn't want to have lunch beside this guy. I'll tell you that. The guy's a, the guy's a meat cleaver murderer, and you're going to let him out? We have to change making sure that these crazy, crazy people uh, that want to go around chopping people up, they're out on the street. So I just want to start off by saying that in by no means do I condone acts of violence by people who are mentally ill or anyone really, but especially in this context, people who are mentally ill or living with schizophrenia. What happened was really, really unfortunate and um, just a case basically of the system failing this person and not allowing them to get the help that they needed before something so tragic happened. But with that, I also want to point out that this is not really indicative or representative of the vast majority of people who are living with mental illness and schizophrenia. Um, the rate of violent acts is by people who are living with schizophrenia is one in 100, which is the exact same as the general population. And people who are living with schizophrenia are generally more likely to be the victims of violence themselves than the perpetrators. So with that kind of preamble out of the way, I want to talk about how Donald or how Doug Ford was talking about this person who was living with schizophrenia in this video. He repeatedly called him crazy and he called people basically who are living with mental illness crazy. And he said he made the comment that he wouldn't want to have lunch next to him, which is a really, really stigmatizing comment to be putting out into the general public and a really harmful message to be putting out into the general public by the leader of a province like this. He also used the terminology of calling him a nutcase and he said that they shouldn't, people like this shouldn't be roaming the streets and that they should be locked up and the key should be thrown away, which is again just really, really harmful to be putting out this kind of message and this kind of um, view and um, perception of people who are living with mental illness into the general public. So later, Doug Ford was asked by reporters if he regretted using the terms animal or nutcase or all of those sorts of toxic terminology. And this is what he had to say. When you came on our air and you talked about the situation sure. uh, that happened to Cam H, you were criticized for some of those comments. Um, do you regret in any way how you characterize that situation? No, I don't regret it at all. This the person I was talking about took a meat cleaver and hacked up his roommate. Who does that? And there isn't one person in this room, including yourself, would want him as a neighbor. No one. And it's about time politicians stop hiding behind, you know, podiums and, and being politically correct. He grabbed the meat cleaver and chopped up his roommate. So here again, Doug Ford is using the um, comment or idea that nobody would want to be this person's neighbor or nobody would want to be around this person, which is again really harmful to people who are living with mental illness because it's just further stigmatizing them within society. It's also very clear that he is showing zero empathy or sympathy for this person's mental health status in talking about this problem. Um, he's not taking into account at all that this person was probably having a, a really severe psychotic break and that is just not being taken into account in the conversation at all. And he is just being painted as this vicious murderer. And there is really no dialogue about the greater issue of his mental health status and what needs to be addressed in that regard. Why was the media concerned about the poor victim? Not a word from the media about the victim. How about the poor victim's family? Just imagine if it was your, 
your daughter, that this animal chopped up, that's sickening. And then he's wandering around and no one knows where he is. He could be down the street right now. So no, I, I don't. We have to put in policies. And then, by the way, nine other people walked away from KMH. You remember the person on the Greyhound that beheaded the person and started eating him? Well, guess what, my friends? We paid for his education. He's walking free right now. So this is a really common um, case that politicians like to bring up when talking about um, the dangerous or the danger of people who are mentally ill or people living with schizophrenia. Um, quite a while ago, there was an incident on a Greyhound bus where a man who was living with schizophrenia beheaded another person. Um, and this, this story is a really, really tragic one again, but the full picture is not often painted. This man tried to get his prescription filled at several different pharmacies, but because he was from a different province, the pharmacies kept turning him away. So it got to a point where his psychosis became so um, unbearable and he was so detached from reality that he ended up committing a really horrible act against another person. Um, but it's really a good example though of how there are some really, really serious holes within our mental health system that are letting people like this fall through the cracks and letting events like this happen. Um, so I think that the conversation needs to be shifted more from um, how dangerous these people are to how our system is failing them. And I'm supposed to be a bleeding heart saying, oh, let's take care of them. I have zero sympathy for these people. I have sympathy for these poor families. Again, he's really stigmatizing people who are living with mental illness and especially schizophrenia by using the term these people and saying that he has zero sympathy for them. This is really um, harmful, again, to the image or the public perception of people who are living with schizophrenia, saying that um, these people essentially are murderers and violent criminals and just really driving that image of people who are living with schizophrenia home to the public. Just imagine the pain they're going through right now. So to answer your question, no, we have to have tougher laws in this country. We've got to put these people away. And if they have mental health issues, they can be dealt with in jail. So again, he's using the terminology of these people and saying that we need to put these people away, which is basically insinuating that people with mental illness should be put in jail. And then he goes further to say that if they have mental illness or mental health problems, that this can be handled in jail. There is so much wrong with this. Jails are not well equipped to deal with and to manage or help people recover from mental health problems. Simple as that. Are you concerned that when you make uh, comments about him, uh, him being an animal uh, and comments about people with mental illness, uh, how they should be treated while being in jail, that these uh, types of comments uh, might be prejudicial um, to uh, people like him getting a fair legal proceedings here in Ontario. You've got to be kidding me. You're, you're, you're telling me I should sympathize with, with people that murder people? Uh, my friend, I differentiate between people with mental illness that our government's putting more money into mental illness, $3.8 billion mental illness and addiction, than any government in the history of Canada. I'm passionate about helping people that have true mental illness. This person was a murderer. So he doesn't even really answer the question at all that he was asked of by the reporter. Um, and he's really failing to acknowledge that the rhetoric that he's using is influencing the public perception of people who are mentally ill and people who are living with schizophrenia and who happen to commit violent acts like this. And he's influencing the conversation that's being had, which will no doubt influence um, if he is going to have access to a fair trial or if people like this are going to have access to a fair trial that takes into account their mental health status. And again, he's making no distinction between people who commit violent acts out from criminal intent, intent or whatnot and people who commit violent acts because of a mental health problem that they're experiencing. He makes no distinction between this and he has, again, or he's exhibiting zero sympathy for people who are experiencing psychosis or mental health or um, breaks from reality or that sort of thing that are a result of their mental health.
He also makes the comment of separating people who have true mental illness with people who are murderers or that sort of thing. So it's almost like as soon as somebody commits a crime or whatnot and they have a mental illness, all of a sudden they are no longer mentally ill and they are just criminals. And that's really detrimental to the conversation and to allowing them to have a fair trial. Um, he also is basically making the assumption that he can differentiate what true mental illness is which is a really dangerous and um, arrogant thing to be insinuating that he can make the differentiation for. He is by no means an expert in the topic. He is not a doctor or a psychiatrist, um, and he can't make that distinction to the general public about what true mental illness is. So he really shouldn't be feigning to know that as a politician. He hacked up, I don't, I don't know if you heard me the first time, he hacked up his roommate with a butcher knife and he's walking free. Do you think that's all right? Do you want him as a, a roommate? Would you want him as a roommate? I'm asking you. No, the answer is no. So stop sympathizing with ax wheeling murderers and all this bleeding heart stuff. I'm passionate about helping people with mental illness. So again, he's making the assumption that people don't want to be roommates of people who are living with schizophrenia or mental illness and um, again, just putting that harmful view that nobody wants to be around people who have schizophrenia. Um, this is really harmful and it's hurtful as a person who is living with schizoaffective disorder to hear this kinds of comments coming from a leader of a prominent province. This guy should have never been let loose in my opinion, but that's where the federal laws have to be a lot tougher. So that, that, that's my answer. And uh, no, I don't regret uh, uh, calling him what I called him, because that's exactly what, what he is. Does he need help? Why is he walking the streets right now? Why is he free if he needs help? Our system is broken. We're going to hold him accountable. There's 10 people that walked out the doors of CAMH. They caught a few, but the rest are walking around. So I agree with one of his comments in this little clip. Um, our system is very much broken, but then he goes on to say immediately following that, that we need to hold him accountable. This is not really acknowledging the gaping holes within our system that allowed this to happen and that let him fall through the cracks. So is it a matter of holding individuals accountable or do we need to hold our system more accountable? I'll let the people decide. I'll guarantee you, if I ask these people out here, 99, if not 100%, would say, I don't want this guy as my neighbor. I don't want him walking the streets. So that's my answer. So it's very clear that Doug Ford was using a lot of really stigmatizing language and rhetoric around talking about mental illness and people living with schizophrenia in those videos. And he does this basically daily in terms of talking about mental health in this way. Um, but the second video that I want to show you is a little bit different in that um, in this one, mental illness is essentially being used as a scapegoat for a larger issue around gun control and around racism and white supremacy. Um, so this one is of Donald Trump essentially blaming mental illness for the recent shootings in El Paso and Dayton. I don't want people to forget that this is a mental health problem. I don't want them to forget that because it is. It's a mental health problem. And as I say, and I said the other night in New Hampshire, we had a, an incredible evening. I said, it's the people that pull the trigger. It's not the gun that pulls the trigger. So we have a very, very big mental health problem. And Congress is working on various things, and I'll be looking at it. But you have to remember also, it's a big mental, I was talking about mental institutions. They closed so many, like 92% of the mental institutions around this country over the years for budgetary reasons. These are people that have to be in institutions for help. I'm not talking about as a form of a prison. I'm saying for help. And I think it's something we have to really look at, the whole concept of mental institutions. I remember growing up, we had mental institutions. Then they were closed in New York, I'm talking about. There were many of them were closed. A lot of them were closed and all of those people were put out on the streets. And I said, even as a young guy, I said, how does that work? That's not a good thing. And it's not a good thing. So I think the concept of mental institution has to be looked at. So he is essentially blaming mental illness and people who are living with mental health problems for the recent shootings in both El Paso and Dayton and just kind of generally blaming it for mass shootings in general. 
um, this is really harmful because it's completely ignoring a lot of really pertinent information that's actually informing what is happening or what is happening with these mass shootings. Um, he's completely disregarding and ignoring the fact that his hard line on immigration and border control and border security and whatnot is radicalizing a lot of people in the United States and um, is leading to events such as the mass shooting in El Paso where it was blatant that the shooter went to a location to target, specifically target people of Hispanic ethnicity. And so this was a racially motivated shooting. It had nothing to do with mental illness. Um, racism and white supremacy are not mental illness and should not be conflated together. He also brings up the fact that people who are living with mental illness should be institutionalized, which is again, just a really harmful and antiquated view on how to deal with people who are living with mental illness. He talks about how mental institutions closed that were around when he was younger. And well, no kidding, <laughs> they weren't a great way or they weren't a great means of helping people living with mental illness to recover. Um, there's a reason that they were closed and that they don't really exist in the same format as they did when he was talking about it anymore. There are now mental health treatment facilities that are a little bit more equipped and better at dealing with mental illness and better at helping people who are living with mental illness. And some people do need the care and treatment that is received in these places. However, to paint the brush that all people living with mental illness need to be institutionalized is a really, really dangerous and stigmatizing um, comment to make. I think the biggest thing that I want to drive home here is how Donald Trump is using mental illness as a scapegoat in terms of the broader discussion about gun control and why these mass shootings are happening. He's completely um, disregarding and ignoring his role within this in terms of radicalizing people and radicalizing white supremacists who are carrying out these racist and violent acts. Um, He's completely ignoring his role in that, and he's completely ignoring the greater discussion that should be happening around gun control and not mental illness. So really, he's just using mental illness as a scapegoat for this, and it's really harmful to people who are living with mental illness. Another really unfortunate thing that is playing out within this twisted um, narrative about mental illness and mass shootings is that the government ordered all other governmental agencies to keep quiet on this dis on this topic because they know that experts are disagreeing with what Donald Trump is saying about this and how he's blaming mental illness for the mass shootings that just happened. Um, experts know that it's not a mental health problem. It's a gun control and racism problem. And so the government is basically censoring these experts from weighing in on this important discussion. And they're making sure that no one is contesting Donald Trump in these um, ridiculous allegations of mental illness being the problem. So it's, it's really unfortunate to um, be having this kind of dialogue around mental illness because he's right. Mental illness does need more funding and we should be putting more efforts and dollars into funding mental health treatment and mental health programming and that sort of thing. But this is by no means the way to get it in terms of vilifying people who are living with mental illness in the public discussion and public perception and um, blaming mental illness for really tragic events such as these mass shootings. So these were two examples in the news right now of how the dialogue around mental illness and mental health is becoming really toxic and is being twisted by politicians and leaders to um, adhere to their own agendas or whatnot. And so what I really want to encourage you as viewers and consumers of news and media is to just approach when politicians are talking about mental illness and mental health in this way, to just approach it with a really, really critical lens and to just question what the message that they are sending to the public and to you is really saying and what they're leaving out or what they're twisting or subverting or that sort of thing. And just kind of step back and really think about what they're saying and how it's impacting people who are living with mental illness and just vulnerable people in general. Please don't get sucked in by this harmful rhetoric that politicians like Doug Ford and Donald Trump are using around mental illness. Um, it is so harmful to people who are living with mental illness and to just the greater discussions around mental health in society in general. 
So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful or informative. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more videos and content like this. If you wanna help support the creation of future videos like this, please make sure to check out my Patreon link in the description below. Um, thanks so much again for watching and wishing you and your loved ones good health. Thanks, bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.